CBA's expectations for 2022. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, let's have a look at this article from Yahoo Finance discussing the ComBank's four major themes or expectations for 2022 and let's see if we agree with what the bank's predicting or their themes. So what can we expect from 2022? Which sectors will be booming and which sectors will see pull back? The Commonwealth Bank of Australia has outlined what it believes will be the major themes to watch for the year ahead. First things first, ComBank, oh sorry, ComSec, Chief Economist Craig James said 2022 will not be like the past two years, which were plagued with COVID-19. I, I am optimistic for 2022, everyone. Perhaps naively so. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll see. But I'm optimistic. An unprecedented amount of fiscal and monetary stimulus sustained by investor optimism has resulted in gains across global equity markets, James said. As a result, global share market indices will start 2022 at or near all-time highs. So, I mean, where can we go from there? Can we, can we go down or can we shoot right up? I mean, how's your stock portfolio going? Depending on what you've invested in, it could be quite healthy. Here are four major themes that will shape the investor landscape in Australia in the year ahead. Number one, less risk-taking. James said investors will were likely to adopt an increasingly focused approach to portfolio construction, staying away from major risk-taking. Share market performance in the coming calendar year will be uh, con- contingent on the risk appetite of investors who have had to construct investment theses in a period where risk grew amidst broader economic expansion initiatives, James said. He said the risk-averse sentiment may hit investment gains as investors choose to play it safe. He said this could lead to less investment in diversified portfolios and listed exchange-traded funds. Additionally, James warned investors would still need to pay attention to changes in monetary policy, negative real estate rates, company profits, and supply chain disruptions. Well, we're going to have to anyway. Okay, so less risk, he's predicting. Focus on miners and materials. James said 2021 we saw key sectors benefit from the global recovery as economies reopened. However, this brings into question how much upside still lies ahead in 2022. James said the material sector made historic movements in 2021 with extreme highs and lows, but the outlook was more optimistic going forward. He said investors were also turning their eyes towards gold to hedge against inflation as a safe haven asset. Are they really? I mean, gold really hasn't moved that much over the whole year, you know. <laughs> Honestly, let's, let's, um, you know what, let's jump over here. I'll bring up trading economics right now as we're having a look at this. What do we have? Commodities, gold. There we go. Okay. So we'll do one year. So we're at 1828. And at the beginning of the year, in January, we were at 1946. So, yeah, I mean, over the years, it's lost, lost a bit of money. Maybe people are coming. Can you claim people are jumping back in because of inflation, really? I mean, let's go to a further range. I mean, maybe if you look back to here, to 2019, people are, are diving in. We'll have to see if gold maintains this support level, but you tell me, guys. You know, those gold miners may still be an opportunity. So... Key Aussie stocks include Newcrest Mining and Evolution Mining, he said. Are you in those miners, guys? Let us know in the comments. Diversified miners are also likely to benefit from their exposure to a variety of minerals, including those which provide exposure to late cycle growth, such as the battery market, including nickel and lithium. Now that's, I probably, I'll do a video on that, everyone. I'll do another one about your favorite nickel and lithium miners on the stock exchange. Let me know. Yours in the comments below, guys, or I'll put I'll put a question up on the community uh, post, and we'll do it the day after this video goes up. Additionally, James said the global move towards more green energy would exist as a long-term structural change and would continue to provide upside to miners that had exposures to such minerals. That's true. There is a push in that direction, and I've I've thrown some money at some. You know, penny stocks pretty much that may have 
or have exposure to that sector. But I was talking to a family member who has gone into, you know, some of the more traditional oil companies as well, because he does, he can't see it. We can't see demand for it disappearing anytime soon. So three, retailers will struggle. Now, this is going to be interesting to see. So increased household savings combined with pent-up demand contributed to record profits for retailers in 2021. But James thought this was not likely to continue. He said purely online retailers like Tem- Temple and Webster and Red Bubble may struggle as Aussies return to shopping in store. He said brick and mortar stores will also continue to be impacted by supply chain issues and higher shipping costs. Well, yes, we have seen shipping costs going higher. I was at Kmart today. It did not look like there was any issues. Remember all of the videos we were looking at where the shelves were empty and they had issues getting stuff for Christmas? It was all fine. Stuff was there. Stuff was cheap. Not bad. What I think we might see is if interest rates climb up, then and people are hit with their mortgages getting slightly more expensive, even if not that much, they'll tighten the belt, guys. They'll tighten the belt and they won't go out. They won't go to the... Or maybe they'll go to the Kmart instead of the Myers. You know. Four, labor shortage, shortages and supply chain issues. Industrial companies were impacted by in 2021 by supply chain disruptions and the lack of raw materials, James said. Labor shortages also added volatility to the operating environment and James said this would likely continue throughout 2022. These problems are likely to persist into 2022 and will only ease ease slowly as bottlenecks become unblocked, he said. So there we have it, guys. These are the five issues that they're talking about. Oh, sorry, four. Four issues. Less risk-taking. Yeah. More focus on miners and materials. I think definitely the renewables and, well, the uh, nickel and lithium. Retailers struggling, I think we'll see that with interest rates going up, impacting on discretionary spending. We'll have to see. That, but that may not be uniform everywhere. And labor supply and supply chain issues, they're just going to take time to kink work themselves out of the system, guys. It's going to take some time for that to get massaged out. I don't think it's going to be a snap solution. So what's, what's your take on this? Do you agree with what the Commonwealth Bank are saying, everyone? Let me know in the comments down below and have a look at, well, we'll look at the last video about one of the ComBank's predictions for 2022 or the last interest rate update because they've slowly been increasing rates. No mention of that here in this video or in this article. I wonder why. I guess it's ComSec and they've got to protect their own, don't they? Still, guys, we'll have to see. <laughs> Maybe I've, I've been... Uh, relaxing too much over the holidays. Take care. I'll see you next time.